get into it? Let's get into it. After Georgia Tech, I think we beat Duke, and then we went down and we played Florida State, and it was 31-31 going into the fourth quarter, and we turned the ball over and we beat ourselves. That was our first loss of the year. Tough game in a tough environment, but we still had a chance to win the ACC. So going into Clemson now, prior to our game, NC State beat Florida State. So by winning this game, we knew we at least were going to have a tie for the conference championship, which Maryland had never done before. So we had to win this game. Clemson was always rated as one of the top teams in the ACC. We had a capacity crowd, was one of the bigger crowds they've had, 52,400 people. They were full of life that night. They were throwing oranges on the field. They had BCS banners flying from everywhere. The place was rocking. It was a crazy, crazy night. You know, we're going to talk about some plays that were exciting in the game. Maybe the most exciting play of the game was when the, the game ended and the fans rushed the field, tore the goalpost down. My own daughter got trampled and Karome Cox saved her life, actually picked her up. Uh, it was bedlam. I mean, I, I was concerned about, you know, people were just grabbing for you. It was, it was just a crazy, crazy atmosphere. Well, let's get into the game. Going into this Clemson game, I thought we had really an excellent game plan, both offensively and defensively. Gary Blackney put together a, a great plan. We had Dominique Foxworth, who we were trying to redshirt. We knew he was gonna be a really good player for us, but we had some injuries, and this was the 10th game of the year, and we burned his redshirt, and we played a lot of man-to-man -man coverage. We ran a pressure stunt with EJ and Leon Joe, and Leon comes free and puts pressure, and it shows a great job of what Dominique did at covering their wide out. Hamilton, who was really a, a good wide receiver, continually tried to beat him and make a play, and Dominique, he just played a superb game. He covered him like a glove all night. Showed tremendous poise for a true freshman. Really, really helped us in a very big time of need. I thought our defensive line played strong again, and I thought Leon Joe had a big game. You know, he made tremendous hits on the quarterback. And EJ just, again, played very good. Karone Cox comes up with a very big interception at the end of the game caused by Leon's uh, pressure. And then Sean Hill, you know, I can't say enough about Julian Gary. You know, he, he made so many clutch plays, both in the Georgia Tech game, but also in this game uh, that really helped us. I thought our offensive line, again, dominated, did a great job in protection, did a great job running. And Bruce Perry and Mark Riley you know, really gave us a great one-two punch. Bruce did a great job. He ran well all night. You know, just had a tremendous career for us. So. Very cool. Okay. Third down and four, late in the third quarter. I believe the play was 7.46 arrow. Sean is supposed to read a high-low on the boundary flat defender. He looks that off, checks the flat, comes back to the Julian Gary, which was his fourth read. Julian runs an unbelievable route. As uh, Bill Curry said, he faked the guy's jock out. Simple little crossing route, not a, not untypical. Oh man, just good yep. move. He just left Johnson's jock in the back of the end zone. And um, <laughs> it was a big catch for us and a big play and tremendous blocking on the play. So it really kind of set the night off right there, finishing Clemson off. He looked off, what does that mean? Means he, he, For people like me who don't know what that is. Well, the defense is key in the quarterback's eyes. Yeah. So if the quarterback can look in one direction and see out of the peripheral vision of who's coming open. I see. And certain people have that ability, and Sean definitely had it. And it, it, you end up controlling the underneath coverage. So he had multiple options in that play, and he right. saw in his peripheral. He went all the way to the fourth option. Because really was the third option because the swing was the fourth option, but he had the third option. At the score of 17 to 6, it's uh, middle of the third quarter. We have Clemson backed up. And once again, we run a pressure with EJ and, and Leon. Leon comes free and he hits Danza right in the mouth. And Danza throws one up and Karome Cox does a great job of covering the guy, makes a big interception. Takes the ball down all the way to the two-yard line. Passion on the ball, but watch Leon Joe. 
come up the pipe. It's the same stunt we showed you earlier, and Clemson hasn't solved it yet, and it forces the short throw. Under thrown, looks like a punt. Cox gets underneath it, doesn't fair catch it by any means, and makes the run. But we had a, a blocking in a penalty, and then they had a, um, a penalty also, so we got the ball on about the 10 yard line, which sets up our next score. We'll get into that one. We'll yeah, we'll get into it. It's a, it's really a fascinating play. And, all right, this play here, it's third and goal on a, about the 10 yard line. And the announcers are talking about this is a field goal. We needed to go up by 14 points. We decided to run a sprint out play. And uh, Bruce was supposed to block the first of the two guys coming off the backside corner. Bruce comes up and makes a, a really big play that really put the game away for us after missing his block. I don't know if he deliberately missed the block, but he, it made it look good. And Sean did an amazing job of avoiding the rush. And it turned out that Bruce got up and he was wide open and we threw it back to him. So the old adage is, I'd rather be lucky than good, it applies to this play. It made us look very smart. And maybe that was what Bruce had in mind all along. <laughs> So what were you thinking as this play was happening? Were you able to see all that in, in, in action, or is it more of... Yeah, I, I was like, you know, oh, what are you doing? And, oh, great play, Bruce. <laughs> Bruce <laughs> A lot of emotions went on that play, yeah. Uh-oh. <laughs> They're getting ready. I don't know if I'd want to be the one that dumped it on him, though. That's mine. I'm not oh, sure. Okay. Here we go. He's going to be real happy about it. I don't know if he will either, but, and again, for Maryland, new experience, so we'll have to check out their Gatorade dumping technique. And they can do that to me every day, every time, every win. Me getting soaked by the ice bucket, and it felt good the first time in my coaching career to have that done. It also was our seventh straight home game win that hadn't been done, I don't think, in the history of Maryland. And it guaranteed us a first place tie at the ACC, and then... The place went crazy. People were coming out of the stands. They tore the goalpost down. They were throwing oranges on the field. It was bedlam. And 54,000 people were erupting with BCS banners and orange ball chants. And it was just so rewarding. You know, in my lifetime, I don't know if I'd ever think I'd see that at Maryland, but it happened. How did it feel as your first time coaching? Well, obviously it was, you know, a dream come true. You know, it's something I felt like I was capable of my whole life, but it was putting the right team together with and being at the right place at the right time with the, the backing of our administration that really made it all work. We were a team. Everybody was pulling the rope the same way, and that's why we were successful.